Good morning, uh, good evening, <laughs> good evening everyone, uh, welcome and welcome to, welcome to our viewers as well. Um, I want to start tonight with a question, what are you attached to? I want us to keep this in mind as, as the sermon goes along because I want you to answer this for yourself. This is not something you, anyone else can answer for you. It is something that you have to go and do personal retrospective of yourself and um, then decide truly for yourself and be honest with yourself as well because if you're going to lie to yourself, you will not take this message and go change what you need to change. The circumstances we find ourselves in is a result of what we have attached ourselves to. If we attach ourselves to worldly, worldly things, then the results will have worldly effects. And if we attach ourselves to Christ, we will the results will be Christly or spiritual. For some Christians, a relationship with Jesus consists of praying to him and going to church on Sundays. They allow Jesus to be a sacrifice for them and for their sins, but the relationship with him stops there. For others, Jesus is an example to follow, and they try their best to live as he did. But since Jesus is in heaven, and they are here, yeah. they don't really expect to have much of a relationship with him. And therefore, in fact, do not have one. Such relationships with Jesus can at best be described as distant. The Bible, however, speaks about an intimate and dynamic relationship or attachment with Jesus. He is, after all, a person and not a theological concept. Not someone who once lived on earth and now is far away but a person who is alive and can be very near. He himself was tempted in all points just as you are, but overcame sin and death. Uh, we can read it, Romans 6 verse 8 in the Amplified. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Because of his faithfulness, he has all the power and grace to help you to overcome sin in your life. This is something that we need to believe because we always think that if we have sin in our lives, that we are alone in the situation. But Jesus is with us in that. And he can help us out of it as well. We think that we have to do something in order to be forgiven. But we, we only need to go to him. And truly with a heart filled of sorrow and a heart filled with um, sorry, basically. I, I can't get the right word for it now. But feeling sorry for what you have done. And just connect with him. And truly just fall at his feet and, and sometimes we need to cry out to him because tears show your real feelings and yeah it shows remorse and that is sometimes what we need to do and we are sometimes too shy or too ashamed to do that in front of God but that, if, if we truly believe that he is our father we should not be ashamed to do so this also means that your attachment with him can be full of life, not something lifeless and stagnant, because he himself is alive. In the New Testament, 
we find literally hundreds of references to the believer's union with Christ. To cite merely a few examples, believers are created in Christ, crucified with him, buried with him, baptized into Christ and his death, united with him in the resurrection, and seated with him in heavenly places. Christ is formed in believers and, and dwells in our hearts. The church is the body of Christ, Christ is in us, and we are in him. The church is one flesh with Christ, believers gain Christ, and are found in him. Furthermore, in Christ, we are justified, glorified, sanctified, called, made alive, created anew, adopted and elected. We sometimes have this misconception that others are worthy of being adopted or elected or being called by God, but we ourselves don't feel that we are in that place where God will call us to do something for him. We feel like, okay, I'm not good enough yet. I still need to grow before God can use me. And this is a lie that we tell ourselves just to stay at, at where we are, to basically stay yeah. stagnant in the position where we are. Yeah. Why is it, in other words, that the word became flesh? The principal reason underlying all the other magnificent reasons that God the Son united himself to our humanity is so that by the Holy Spirit we may be attached to Christ and thus enjoy his fellowship with the Father forever. This is eternal life. When we attach ourselves to Jesus, this is what eternal life is all about. We are waiting for, for the end of the world to have eternal life. But we actually have to attach ourselves to Jesus. And that is what eternal life is. Living a life attached to Jesus. Our attachment living Christ... Sorry. Our attachment with the living Christ is the essential truth of our new and, et ex and eternal existence in a way that gloriously transcends our finite understanding. We are really and truly joined spiritually and bodily to Christ. We don't realize that we are already joined with him because when we gave our hearts to him, we have joined with him. It's just that we ourselves have not made the decision to make that attachment because when you are in a relationship, you first meet that person and you get to know them and then you make an attachment with them, basically an, a commitment yeah. into that relationship. And we, we, some of us live our lives without making that attachment with him. We are just happy with being there. We are not, we, we are not expecting more. We don't want to grow more in him. And um, we don't because we don't make that step. God wants to deepen our experience of him and he can't do that without our participation. So we have to make that decision and we have to participate in order for that attachment to be made. Because Jesus can't do it alone. Like a relationship is a two-way street. And that is the same when we have an attachment to Jesus. He can only reach out so far. If we stay back and we don't reach to him, then he can't take us by our hands and make the attachment. So how do we set ourselves up to succeed in attaching to God every day? I have 
three essentials for connecting or attaching with God. I will firstly name them. It's choose a time, choose a place, and have a plan. Choose a time. Jesus took time with God early in the morning before the distractions of the day began. God will meet you wherever and whenever. But beginning your day with God helps you shape your day instead of the, your day shaping you. Yes. Choose a place. Make where you have your time with God a place of minimal distraction. Turn off media devices and plant yourself somewhere you can focus. An attachment cannot occur when you are distracted by other things. So if you are distracted by your kids shouting and screaming, you're not going to be able to connect with God because you won't be hearing him. You'll be hearing your kids shouting and screaming. That's why it's very important for you to find a place where you can truly just shut off everything and just be quiet. Um, we, we sometimes make this so, so difficult for ourselves, but it is so simple. We just need to, uh, to get the right place to make that connection with God. This is an intimate action, and thus we need to be focused on Jesus for the attachment to happen. Uh, this um, basically made me think of two lovers when they first meet and how do they make that connection? They look into each other's eyes, basically. They are not seeing anything around them. They are just see, looking in, deep into each other's eyes and that is all they see. Nothing that happens around them even it grasps them at all. They are just um, intertwined, basically, with each other. And that is basically how we need to be with Jesus. Uh, we need to just shut off, just close our eyes, and we need to imagine looking into his eyes, yeah. what his uh, eyes would look like, because his eyes are loving kindness. And we can just think about that and already look into his eyes and just focus on him and become intertwined with him. The third essential is have a plan. Ask for, for God for guidance. This is very important. We always, we make the decision, okay, we're going to make that time, but we don't go into it with a plan. Why are you go, what are you going to do whilst you have that time for him? This is very important that we go with a plan. Um, it makes me think of what when Pastor preached about the lady with the blood flow. She had a plan when she or she was uh, she was going for him. She knew the time that he was going to be where he was going to be. She knew the place he was going to be at, and she had a plan that she was just going to grab his garment. That was her plan, and. She succeeded and she made the attachment. And that is how we need to be when we want to attach with Jesus Christ. As we need to go with a plan and expectation and a desire to connect with her. A connection must come from your heart. It has to come from within. It needs to come from your spirit as well. You need to open up to him in order for that attachment to happen. Yeah. Knowing more about how your personality connects you with God could help in your planning. So it's also important how you're going to connect with him in your personality. What, what God sees in you and who you are in God is important for you to make the attachment. If we have never spent time in his word, we would never know the partner we are attaching ourselves to. If we don't know who we are attaching ourselves to, then that is where heartbreak comes. And in a love relationship, 
when you attach yourself with someone you don't, you don't even know, then it never works. And thus we need to know, learn to know God. We need to read his word and know what he tells us. Because if we know what he tells us and how he feels about us, then it will be so much more easier for us to open up to him and to make that connection with him. If we have never spent time in his word, we would not, never know the partner we are attaching ourselves to, and thus it is important to study the word. Yeah. This is the reason why we always hammer on the fact that we need to study the word. And if we do not understand what the word says, that is what the leadership is for. We are there to answer questions. And if we can't answer them, then we can go to Pastor Anton and Pastor Rihanna, and they can even give us answers. But if we don't study the word, we will never have questions. So, and if we never have questions, we will never get revelation on that. It is important to connect with a desire and expectation of intimacy with him. Selfish reasons could hinder the attachment. By prioritizing our schedules around God, we develop an attachment with him. Any healthy relationship between two people involves commitment. As I said earlier as well, we have to have that commitment to him, otherwise Along the way, we're going to lose it. We're, we're going to walk away from him and turn our backs on him and blame him for that. When it's actually us that weren't truly committed to that attachment. Any healthy relationship between two people involves commitment and time for the connection to develop. Our relationship with God needs the same thing. So he needs our time. We always say we are so busy, there is not enough time. But when you're in a relationship, you make time for that person. And we also need to make time for God. Because if we don't make that time, we will never experience a true interaction with him. We will never experience hearing his voice or feeling his love. Because if we don't attach to him, we can never truly know how much he loves us. If Jesus, God in the flesh, felt the need to stop and focus on his Father without interruptions, shouldn't we do the same? Because even Jesus made sure that he didn't have interruptions while he was talking to the Father so that he can make a connection with his father. He can have a two-way conversation with him. And if you expect to have that with God, then you have to make the time for it. You have to get a place where you don't get any distractions. And you have to make a plan when you go and connect with him. As a people of God, we are reminded that we need constant relation and connection with our great creator and sustainer no matter what context of life we live in. We sometimes use the excuse, oh, but the Bible is written in the old days. It doesn't count for today. But the, the fact is that we can learn from God's word. He wouldn't have given it if we can't learn from it. The results of connecting or attaching to God are uh, these nine results that I want to discuss. Our connection to God makes us clean. Our connection to God helps us grow spiritually. Our connection to God helps us be good and much spiritual fruits. We connect to God's word, which leads to life. We connect to God's plan, which leads us to clear vision of eternal inheritance. A connection or attachment to God produces peace, purpose, and power. Our connection or attachment 
results in our deliverance. Our thoughts become unified with God's thoughts. And lastly, we grow in discernment. Our connection to God makes us clean. When we give our hearts to Jesus, we are made clean. He cleanses us. And um, he cleanses us also from the, the effects of our sin, of our past. And this is the same when we make an attachment to God. Remember, you can't attach to something that is clean if you are dirty. Because you're going to go and make that dirty as well. So he cleanses us when he attaches to us. John 15 verse 2, we read that Jesus cleanses and prunes even those who bear, that bear fruit in order for them to be strengthened and even become better. When we are attached to Jesus Christ, then we are cleansed through him that helps us grow. Through our repentance of sin and turning away from the sin, Jesus cleanses us from the effects of that sin. When we are attached to Christ Jesus, our body, mind, and hearts are cleansed. See, we, we, we always need to realize that it's not just our body that can be uh, uh, dirty or um, un, uh, unholy or, or anything like that. Our minds is the, our greatest enemy. And that is the place that needs to be cleansed as well because our thoughts control us sometimes. We don't always control our thoughts. And then also with our hearts, if our hearts are not cleansed, then we cannot love others. And if we cannot love others, we cannot love God. Long before Jesus, God assured his people that he would send a redeemer to cleanse them. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. This is Isaiah 1 verse 18. And he freed us from all shame by purifying us and declaring us holy. So he has already cleansed us. He has already purified us. But our we sometimes cling to, to that shame of what we have done in the past. And that is something that we need to let go of in order to move forward in that att attachment or connection with God. When the Pharisees asked why Jesus' Jesus's disciples didn't follow the rules of ceremonial washing, Jesus explained that uncleanness comes from within. He, Mark 7 verse 20 to 23 says, What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, Greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. We sometimes look too much to the outer and we forget that the inner is what truly makes us. We forget that our thoughts direct us. Because you, your brain is the thing that tells your body to move. So if we cleanse our, our thoughts, then our flesh will have no other... Um, dis, uh, no, can I keep it a bit? Um, they will, it will have no other choice but to obey because the brain controls your body. 
And when your heart is clean, then you, you will love as God has told us to love. We cannot change our thoughts, but God can, and he does. We always want to try things on our own, but God does things for us if we just allow him. We want to keep controlling, uh, keep the control when God should be in control of everything in our lives. We, we have this, um, per, uh, this thing about ourselves that if we are not perfect, then God will not accept us. But that is not how he is. Because he makes us perfect when we attach to him and we open up to him. So first we have to open up and then the perfection will come. Titus 3 verse 5 says, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit washes us body, mind, heart, and soul. We just need to believe that. And we need to realize that when we attach to Jesus, that he does the cleansing. We just need to open up and allow him to do so. This uh, second result is our connection to God helps us grow spiritually. The fruit that God wants to produce also takes place within your soul in the form of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. These fruits consist of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we look at all of these, how many of these can we say we are gift, um, not gifted with? We are exercising in our lives. Do we really have joy? Or do we walk around with, with these sad faces all the time? How do people look at us when they see us like this? We are supposed to be the people that reflect joy, that reflect patience. Are we the ones that are quick to snap when something happens, snap at someone else? That reflects God. We, everything we do reflects God. And we don't always show, show these, these fruits when we are outside. When uh, we focus on coming to church and think that that is enough. But it's not enough. We need to reflect what God has told us to, what God has given us. Because he has given us all of these fruits. He has given us love. He has given us joy. He has given us patience. We just need to make the decision to exercise them. Each one of these gifts from God will have the effect of transforming you more fully into an image of God himself in our world. So when we walk out of church, we are supposed to reflect God. When others see us, they are supposed to say, there goes Jesus. Because when Jesus walked, people said, there goes the Son of God. And that is how we need to be seen. We need to be seen as, that is a child of God. And, and how many of us can truly say that people see us as that? We, we say we are Christians, but in fact, we need to say that we are children of God and we need to act like children of God. We need to show love, kindness. Um, every day when you walk into your office or even your workplace, do you greet everyone? Do you show kindness to others? If someone is looking like they are having an off day, are you going to them and asking them, what's going on? Uh, can I help you? I know someone that can help you, that can make you feel better. Are we doing that? Because 
this is what we are supposed to do. This is what God expects of us to do. And when we are attached to God, this is not a difficult thing because you will do it in love because you are in love with God. When you, may, uh, yeah, when you have that attachment with God, uh, you, you are in love with him. If we can see it like that, because when you're in love, you will do anything for that person. Whatever they ask or say, you will do for them. And that is what attachment is, is to do anything for God. Try to take a moment to consider each one of these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Each one of them are desirable. Growing in a desire for them will help you grow in a desire for the Holy Spirit in your life. So when we desire these fruits more, we will also desire the Holy Spirit more in our lives. Then, Then time will not be an issue. And distractions will also not be an issue because we will be focused on him. And we will have that plan to connect, to, to have that intimacy with him, to have that relationship that we, that we desire, that the spirit in us desires to have. John 15 verse 5 makes it clear that if we separate ourselves from God, then it is impossible to experience any one of these fruits of the Holy Spirit. So if we are separated from him, we can never have one of these fruits. Without a firm connection to our God, we will have no love. We will have no joy. We will have no kindness and we will have no patience. None of that is possible unless our lives is firmly connected to the vine, who is Jesus Christ himself. If we are not connected to that vine, then we cannot grow because that vine gives you the sustenance to grow. And if we don't connect to him and attach to him, then we will not grow because we are not getting the food we need to grow. Thus, if we are not attached to the vine, which is Christ Jesus, then we cannot grow spiritually. To grow spiritually, we need to have an intimate relationship with God, which comes with connection and attachment. God wants you to be a responsible, growing member of your local church. He wants us to grow in our churches, not just in numbers. This is more about growing spiritually. Because the church can be full, but no one feels that love for each other. No one feels that joy with each other. They don't share that with each other. You can, uh, it's like they say, the, the church can be full and you can feel, still feel lonely in that. You can still feel like you're on your own. And that's why it's so important to grow spiritually because then you have these fruits and you affect other people's lives with these fruits. The third result is our connection to God helps us bear good and much spiritual fruits. Jesus Christ, who is our true vine and our intimate 24-7 attachment in God, will sustain if we directly attach him, attach to him who is the life-giving vine. We must not only be a leafy Christian, this, a leafy Christian is someone who does not bear fruit. It is, you have the leaves, but you do not have the sweet fruit that, that grows on that uh, leaves. Um, We must not only be a leafy Christian who is materially prosperous, but their attitude is contrary to God's words. The leafy Christian are those who do not bear fruits. Those who proclaim to be Christians, but not living according to the will of God, 
the Father and Jesus Christ written in the Holy Scriptures. So this is those who proclaim to be Christians, those who proclaim to be children of God, who sit in church every Sunday, but they show no growth. There is no fruit to be seen, and they are just there. This leafy Christians are those who use the name of the Lord in healing and casting demons and many other ways, but Jesus Christ will declare them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I have seen people come and go, and you know what? I have also looked up to so many Christians and just wanted to be like them. I, I wanted to um, have what they had. And in the worst time of their lives, they turned their backs on God. And that is, that is a sad thing, but it is something that happens. Because when the worst things happen, that is when you can truly see who is attached to God, who is attached to Jesus Christ, because you, you won't turn your back on him. That attachment and that encounter that you've had with him will carry you through the good and the bad. So you will not break that attachment. Because when you found love, true love like that, you would want to hold on to it with both hands and never let go. Matthew 7 verse 21 to 23 in the NIV says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. See, even though people do miracles, it does not mean that they are attached to God. This is not a sign of being attached. It is just a gift given to them. But they still had to go and make that attachment with him, connect to him, um, make a relationship with him, make that time to spend time with him and get to know him. Uh, when you are with someone and you've made an attachment with them, you can even tell... A, how many hairs they have on their head, how many hairs they've lost. Because um, Jesus tells us that he knows every single hair on our heads. And that shows of his love for us. But how do, what can you show for your love for him? Can we say we know every hair on his head? We know when he, when he talks to us, we know for sure that's him. Can we truly say that, or do we have that doubt that uh, is it truly you, Lord? This is the things that, that can tell us when we are actually connected or attached to God, because we will have no doubt, because you would recognize his voice, and you will yearn to see his eyes, to, to smell him. You will yearn to, you will hunger for him and thirst for him because he will be the only one that can take away your hunger and your thirst. What happened to those leafy Christians? Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Yeah. Matthew 3 verse 10, the NIV says, the axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire so the axe is all ready to cut the, those trees down because we must know that 
bad things, they, um, they're infectious. So it has to be cut out and taken out before it infects the whole crop. So that is what happens to us when we do not bear fruit. Some way or another we get cut down. In John 15 verse 1 to 10, Jesus commanded us to abide, to remain, to dwell in him, that we produce fruits and become clean. But those who do not connect or attach to him will not bear fruit because it will wither, it will die soon and be burnt. I want to read John 15 verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. The first amazing thing to recognize in this passage is the simple fact that God wants us to produce good fruits. He also wants to bring his grace and mercy into the world through you. So he wants to use you. He wants to have you be useful to him. The vine does not produce the fruit alone, but does so through the instrumentality of the branches. Are we instrumental to him? Can he use us? Can we be of use to him wherever we go? That is something that only we can answer for ourselves. The fourth result is we connect to God's word, which leads to life. Human beings live with fresh air, good food and clean water. Without it, humanity dies. People used to eat three meals and others, they also have three snacks, which comes to six meals a day. But God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yeah. So what is more important than those six meals that you are having? Mm. The word of God is the one thing that sustains you. It is the one thing that takes away the hunger that you have. You know, we sometimes feel that there is something missing in our lives. And we can't pinpoint what that, that thing is that is missing in our lives. And the fact of the matter is, is it's that you have not connected with God. You have not gone and studied His Word. The, the word fills you that empty place that you have. We just need to go and study what he has given us. Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 in the NIV says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The words of God speaking in the Holy Spirit Scriptures are spirit and it is life. So we must treasure the words of God more than we treasure our daily meals. Like Job 23 verse 12 said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. All questions of life and even the answers to life's struggles are found in the pages of the Bible. Every question we have, we can find the answer to in the Bible. But our laziness keeps us from finding the revelation in the Bible because we have put too many emphasis 
on what the world can give us and forgotten what God can give us. We must have a deep yearning of God's words every day in our life, just as a deer pants for the water. Psalms 42 verse 1 and 2 in the ESV says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When shall we come and appear before God? When shall we make that attachment with him? We are hunger, hungry and we are thirsty, but we are stubborn to go and go to what can make us full and what can quench our thirst. We, we keep it for last. We make it our last resort. Instead of making our, it our first resort, going to him first, and letting him take away that hunger. Let him take away that, that thirst that we have. Connecting or attaching to God results in a hunger or thirst to know God more through his word which leads to life. When you are attached to God, you learn to know more about him through his word. This is the only way we can truly know God is by reading his words in the Bible. Just like we always ask questions when we go on a date, when we're in a relationship. So we can only ask questions once we've heard his words. Because if you don't, if you can't question what you don't know. So, and you can't get answers to the questions if, if you don't know what to ask. Merely knowing about food in the mind will not satisfy hunger. It must be eaten. So just knowing about it, that food is going to take our hunger away is not enough. You have to go and eat the food in order to become full. And that is the same with the word of God. In order for that hunger and thirst to go away, we need to go and study the word. Merely knowing about Jesus in the mind is not the same as having an intimate, personal attachment with him. As you draw closer to Jesus, the Bible's words you have read and heard and spoken so many times before will suddenly become life and alive for you. So those words that you couldn't before understand becomes a reality to you when you go and study the Bible and you attach to God. He makes everything understandable. Basically, you, you receive your revelation because you are attached to him and he shows you what the meaning is. Because we all, um, a lot of people say they don't read the Bible because they don't understand what it says. It's because you have not asked God to open the Bible up to you, to give you the revelation of what it says. If you don't try and if you don't persevere in trying, it will never open up to you. If you want something so much, you have to work for it. So we have to go and do the work and, in order to understand what God wants to tell us. Dry verses that had little meaning before will become full of power and desire to live the life that Jesus lived. The more we read his word and study his word, the more we'll, we will desire to know God. The more we will want to know more about him. And the more power we will receive as well. Because, um, as they say, knowledge is power. And this 
is so true in this case as well. Because if you know nothing about God, then you you can't speak to your situations. You can't um, bind things. You can't act as Jesus did because you don't know, even know what he did. You will sense that a spirit of revelation speaks in your inner man. And you will understand the word of God and live your own life very differently as a result. So once we understand what we are reading, that is when we go and make changes. Because then we know, okay, this is what I am doing wrong. And this is what I can do in order to live the way that God wants me to live. Faith will be born in your heart at a deeper level with each revelation over the word. So as our knowledge of the word increases, so our faith will also increase. Because you believe what you are reading. you Because you understand it better. And as your faith grows, so does the power of the Spirit in your life. So that you can follow in Jesus' footsteps even more. So that is how we learn to walk in his footsteps. Is by reading and studying the, the um, map that he has given us. The fifth result is... We connect to God's plans, which leads us to clear vision of eternal inheritance. God has the best interest in your heart and has given you a divine God's plan of salvation and a map called the Bible. Our Bible is the basic instruction before leaving earth. It is the basic information before living eternal life. Yeah. So before we can live eternal life, and now remember I said living eternal life means to live in an attached attachment with God. So in order to live in an attachment with God, we need to know his words. God promises that he may to us eternal life if we continue connected to him. So he promised us eternal life if we are attached to him. Yeah. John 17 verse 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Knowing God is eternal life. Yeah. Truly knowing everything about him is the eternal life. Yeah. God's plan of salvation is revealed in the pages of the Bible and as shown in God's feast steps of salvation. Revelation 22 verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. When we are attached to God, we get that right to enter into the gates of the city. We receive that right because we are part of Jesus Christ. We need to remember when we attach to God, it's like holding hands with someone. Wherever they go, you go with them. So it's him giving us direction as well. So wherever he goes, we will go with him. And when you are so connected to that person, you start looking like that person as well. And that's why other people say, oh, now that is a child of God. It is because you are starting to look more like Jesus Christ. As we seek to do his will 
and follow that plan, we find greater direction and purpose. So when we seek to follow his will, that is when we find purpose and, and direction in our lives. So many times we, we ask people what their calling is and they say they don't know. And this is because they are not connected with God. God has not shown them what their calling is. And they don't have direction because they are not attached to him. They have not having that two-way conversation with him where he reveals that to them. And that is why it's so important to attach yourself to him. The sixth result is connecting or attaching with God produces peace, purpose, and power. Peace shows itself by the ability to properly relate to God. Other persons, ourselves, and our world. Peace is the one thing that, that relates to God, us to God. When we have peace, other people can, can see God in us as well. This morning, I woke up and um, I just had this anxious feeling the whole day. And um, even last night, I couldn't sleep. And I couldn't understand because I wasn't afraid to come and speak. Um, I've n never felt that um, uh, pent up feeling before. And it, it made me feel sick. And my tummy even turned. And while we were singing, um, and I just opened up to God, he brought that peace. And that is what we need to understand. We can only find peace in him. When, when we open ourselves to him, he gives us that peace. Purpose provides understanding of God's desire for our lives. If we don't have a purpose in our lives, then we, that is when depression comes. Because we don't know why do I even exist. We can only know these things when we are connected with God and he can share with us what he has called us for, what our, his plan for our life is. Because if we ask him to show us, then he, can sh he will show us. If your desire is so great to know why he made you, why you were born, that is something that so many people ask and only we actually know what that is because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You are not just here to come to church and sit there. No matter how old you are, even a child has a purpose. A baby has a purpose. They just need to still grow in maturity in order to find out what that purpose is and to walk in that purpose. We, we each have a purpose, but not each of us want to know what that purpose is. We prefer just sitting in the pew and listening to what God has to say, but we have no desire to apply it to our lives. And that is when people die without even accomplishing their purpose. And it is a very bad thing because their uh, the whole life, what, what was it meant for? We don't think of that. And um, when I think of my life, I want to know that, I, that it was meaningful, yeah. that God was able to use me and that I, ch uh, that I had an effect on others, yeah. that, I was, that my life was a, an example of what they could have if they just give their lives to God. We need to have that desire to know our purpose. Yeah. Power is the ability to do all we were put in this world to accomplish. Let me just read that again. Power is the ability 
to do all we were put in this world to accomplish. So what you were put in this world to accomplish, that is powerful. To um, reach the, your will, uh, okay, not your will, God's will for your life is, is something that is powerful. And we don't see it as powerful. But that is what success is. When you reach your calling and you walk in your calling, you are doing exactly what God has planned for you. The seventh result is our connection or attachment results in our deliverance. We saw this with the lady with the blood flow, um, that she was delivered or when she attached to Jesus Christ. When connecting or attaching ourselves to someone, we become more like them, mm -hmm. becoming a reflection of what they are. Thus, when we attach ourselves to God, we receive deliverance of all kinds of iniquities, sickness, and imperfection. Hebrew 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. What does this mean to us? It means that if we attach ourselves to Jesus, yes, we will go through temptation. But, just like Jesus, we will not give in to it. Yeah. Temptation will still be there, but we have the ability to resist. Therefore, when we are attached to Jesus Christ, we will no longer succumb to temptation, to sin, as we will start to reflect Jesus Christ. God requires perfection. We read this in Matthew 5 verse 48. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And, and Isaiah 59 verse 2. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Our iniquities can therefore hinder us from having a connection or attachment with God. Our uh, number eight, um, the eighth result that we can see when we attach to God, our thoughts become unified with God's. Your connection or attachment with Jesus exists in your heart, mind, and spirit. When he is the center of your affection, then he also sits on the throne of your heart. So he needs to become our center in order to be in control in our lives as well. Thoughts that come into your mind begin to be brought before him with the attitude of heart. Dear Lord Jesus, is this thought pleasing in your sight? When we are attached to him, we want to please him. So everything we do, we think of how God will think of this. What God will think of, of if I do this, will it please him? Will he um, be proud? Because um, we always want to make our father proud of us as when we are children. And that's how it is with God as well. We want to make him proud. And this is how our hearts need to be. We need to think of what will make God proud. With such an attitude, your heart begins to understand what the mind of Jesus is, which is the mind of the spirit, life, and peace. You learn that some thoughts bring you life and peace, while others bring only unrest and emptiness. This is the answer. Why do we feel empty? 
It's because we are empty. We don't have God there. The, uh, the reason we feel empty is because he is not attached to us. And this way you learn to discern between good and evil and the daily situations of our lives. Between what is and what is not well pleasing in his sight. Jesus becomes your instructor and guide to a deeper life in the spirit. When we are attached to God, we undergo a mindset change and start a process of spiritual maturity. So the first step of becoming mature in Christ is to attach to him so that he can direct us and help us grow in maturity. The last result is we grow in discernment. When we are connected to God, we can see through his eyes and he can show us what are between wrong and right. When we are attached to Christ Jesus, then we start growing in discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge well. It enables us to tell right from wrong and shields us from spiritual deception. In 1 Kings 3 verse 9, we read where Solomon asked for a discerning heart in order to lead God's people. God ties discerning to spiritual maturity and, and spiritual maturity links to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Discernment is a spiritual gift as well as something to grow in. As a spiritual gift, it is used in circumstances to fulfill God's will in a specific moment. And as a skill, it can be grown over time as we study and apply God's word. Discernment is a desirable quality to cultivate as we are attached to God. We grow in discernment when we are attached to the way, the truth, and the light. If we look at John 15 verse 5, which states, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. This verse confirms that without being attached to God, we, whatever we do means nothing, as it is not recognized as being done in, for the kingdom of God, but for ourselves. It is recognized for being do, uh, done for our own glory and not God's. Connection and attachments with people are dynamic and that they often change with time and can grow deeper. So it is also with also the same with your connection and attachment with Jesus Christ. Just as God's mercies are new every morning, your attachment with Jesus can also be new and alive every single morning. The connection and attachment becomes deeper as your love for him increases. And as your love for your own life and your own will decreases. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Do we not want to dine with him? Have that date with him where we can just look into his eyes and get to know him more and to just 
make that attachment with him, to make that commitment with him as well, to, to eat what he has prepared for us, to enjoy the sweet desserts that he has uh, taken the time to prepare for us. Only the best is on that table. All your favorites, because he knows you that well, everything you love to eat, and enough to eat as much as you want. This is the type of date that you can have with Jesus. You have just have to be open to it. Anyone that is open to attach with God can have it, but the key is to be open. The attachment that you have with Jesus is also in your human spirit, where you learn to turn to him in times of stress, struggle, temptation, away from your own thoughts and feelings. There you meet the spirit of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. We read that in Revelation 19 verse 10. The prophetic spirit of Jesus speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort right to your human spirit. And you will sense that you are powerfully strengthened. When we have that time with Jesus, you will not walk away weakened. You will definitely walk away strengthened. And you will definitely not want to walk away because you will want more. When you truly have that encounter with God, you will just want more and more. You'll become greedy for Him. And that is a place where, where we need to come to. We need to become greedy to to be with him because it is too long that we have been satisfied with little. We need to become um, greedy for the love that he has for us, for what he wants to give us and for what he has called us for. The most direct way to connect with God is to converse with him through prayer. If we pray in faith and listen to the Spirit carry His answers to our hearts, we will find ourselves fully involved in a two-way conversation. We also connect with God through our covenant, which binds us to Him by eternal promises secured by priesthood power. Knowing the only true God means having an intimate, personal connection with him, not just knowing about him. It is not enough to know that he exists. You need to know what he loves and what, just as he knows what, what your favorite foods are, we also need to know what his favorites are, what he loves to hear, what he loves to see, and what he loves for us to become. Connecting or attaching to God is to know God intimately and personally. Your mind must change before you can connect or attach to God. Our minds always come in the way of a deeper relationship with God. It is, the, it is truly our worst enemy because our minds always drift. Even when we sit in church and listen to the sermons that, that the prophet or the pastors are giving us, that is why we don't apply it to our lives. It's because our minds drift. We allow our minds to drift when we are getting the, the food that God has prepared for us. It's like going to spur and just looking at that steak and not eating it. You are paying for that steak, but you are not eating it. Um, it's very crazy, actually, because who does that? 
This means being sorry for doing wrong, turning from it with God's help, and desiring Jesus as Lord. When we are connected or attached to Jesus, we rely on Jesus alone for our eternal life. If you are connected or attached to Christ alone, then at the gate of heaven, the Lord will say to you, Enter, good and faithful servant. That is the only way he will say that to us, as if we are truly attached to him. It is clear that when we attach to God, we experience spiritual growth bear much fruit, better ourselves, and have a much deeper relationship with Christ Jesus. Now I want to come back to the statement I made in the beginning, where I said, our circumstances are a result of what and who we are attached to. Does this statement mean that if we are going through circumstances that we are not attached to God? No, that is not what it means. This means, as Jesus said, that he cleanses and repeatedly prunes those who bear fruit in order for them to bear even greater fruit. So our circumstances is to make us be greater and sweeter fruit so that we can do even greater things. John 15 verse 2 the NIV reads, Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit, to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. So it is to make us excellent in his eyes, in his sight. Yes, our circumstances is a result of our attachment whether it be an attachment to God or to worldly things. However, the circumstances that we face whilst being attached to God is to form us, better us, and help us grow spiritually. Whereas the circumstances we face whilst being attached to everything other than God brings us no growth, only agony. The fact is that you yourself decide what connection or attachment you have with Jesus. No one can make that attachment for you. You have to decide what type of connection you're going to have with God. You must first choose to believe that an intimate connection or attachment with Jesus is possible before you can enter into such an attachment with him. For everything, spiritually speaking, is a product of our faith. When we attach ourselves to Jesus Christ, we control our situation. They do not control us. Um, when our, in our life groups we were... Um, sharing about um, what Prophet shared with us regarding attachment and the lady with the blood flow. And um, I know Pastor said that we need to choose to pursue God. And the question came up in our life group, how do we pursue God? And um, I, I didn't really have an answer for them because we all have different ways of pursuing God. And yesterday morning, when I, uh, we went to town, God was just sharing with me that it is so simple 
to connect to him and to attach with him. It is us who make it difficult and complicated. Basically, the basic way of just connecting with him is by lifting our hands and surrendering to him. To just shut off. No, you don't even have to say a word. You just shut everything off and you just you be still. That is all you need to do. And then he also explained to me, it's not like this. Because some of us, we lift our hands like this. And God is our center. Now what we do when we lift our hands like this, we box him in. Remember when we lift our hands, we are not lifting our hands to an external God. We are lifting our hands so that he can take over. Because when we lift our hands, we are no longer boxing him in. So we are releasing him. And that is how he can connect with us and attach to, with, uh, make an attachment with us because this way we are open for it. We need to stop boxing God in and we need to open up so that we can make that attachment with him. It is basically like that song says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That is a promise. So if we open up to him, he will come. He will not let us down and he will be there. In conclusion, I, I want to leave you with the question I asked in the beginning. What are you attached to? And this is, only you, uh, this is a question you have to go and personally reflect on and be honest with yourself. And you can only make that um, decision to change once you have been honest with yourself. Okay. Just want to pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for your words, Lord. Thank you that you direct us and that you want to attach to us, that you want to be attached to us. Not, not just some of us, but me, Lord. We all can say, with me, Lord. You love me so much that you want to be in that love relationship with me. And if I only open up, then you will come and make the attachment. Lord, I pray that we all will be honest with ourselves and that we will make the change that needs to be made. Lord, I ask that you will reveal unto every single one of us the truth, and that each of us will apply this word into our lives so that we can make a change and be of use to you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.